Welcome to another video in the data migration playlist. So far in this playlist, we have seen together how to migrate the different master data objects for the GL accounts, customers and vendors or business partners, cost centers and profit centers, and the materials or products. Also in the last video, I explained the concept of data migration of GL account balances and line items. In the video today, I will show you how to use the data migration cockpit on SAP S4 HANA to migrate the fixed assets master data and the transactions, which are the same migration object in the data migration cockpit in SAP S4 HANA 2022. As usual, in order to fully understand what I explain in this video, you must follow the playlist from the beginning. I will leave you a link to the playlist here. And if inside the playlist, there are videos you cannot access because they are member exclusive, then you can check the channel membership program to get access to these videos. I will leave you also another link here to the channel membership program. Now let's start. Let's start directly with the data migration cockpit. So this is my SAP S4HANA 2022 system. This is SAP Fury. And I will open the same application I use in every demo, which is Migrate Your Data Migration Cockpit. And then our migration project that I have been using since the beginning of this playlist is Migration Demo of AG00. In the video today, I'm not going to show you how to create the master data of fixed asset in SAP GUI because I already did a full playlist for fixed assets, which is one of the most viewed fixed uh, playlists on the channel. I'm very happy with this. So, so thank you to everyone who has watched this playlist. So anyway, there is a full playlist for fixed assets where I explained everything related to fixed assets from master data and transactions, depreciation, account determination, and so on. So I'm not going to explain how fixed assets work in SAP because I already did. I will leave you a link to the playlist somewhere up here in the video. So you can check it if you want to understand more about fixed assets before you watch the data migration. So now I will assume we already know what is fixed assets and how depreciation works and so on. So here, this is my migration project. And if you check, I don't have the fixed asset object selected. So what I will do first is I'm going to change the settings of my migration project to add the migration object of fixed assets. So I will click on settings here and then click on edit. Then I have to wait for the migration objects to load. And here, these are all the migration objects available and we have used in project. I can use the search box here or I can look manually. So I'm here, I'm going to look for fixed assets. So keep going, keep going. So we should have it here. So here we have fixed assets, including balances and transactions. And this is the only object available for fixed assets. And as you see, it has both balances and transactions with master data. So this is why I explained in the last video how the transaction data works before I go into the master data migration of fixed assets, because in the video today, I will cover both the master data of fixed assets and balances and transactions. So I will click here on used in project and then save. So here we have predecessor objects or, uh, are available for this object. I know that I already migrated all the objects I need to migrate fixed assets. So I will click on do not add and then we are back to our project. And if we scroll all the way to the end of the screen, here we have not ready for processing fixed assets. So it has been added, but we still need to wait a little for SAP to activate it in our migration project. Until this happens, we can check the documentation. So let's go in to the migration object. And then as you see here, you can access the documentation for the migration object by clicking here. And this will take us to another window where we have the documentation for this migration object. This is very important to read. There are very important notes here explaining how to migrate your fixed assets master data and transactions. So very important to read. Now let's go back to our migration project and see if the object is now ready for processing. So now it looks like it's ready. Let's look for it here. So here we have fixed assets, including balances and transactions. So now this one is available and ready for processing. If we want to check the predecessor objects, we can click here. So the predecessor is the cost center or the predecessors are the cost center, profit center, product and supplier. And if you are following the playlist, you know that we already migrated all of this. So again, this is why we always follow a playlist. So we have already migrated all of these. We are good to go. Now I will start following the same steps that we did for all the other migration objects. So first I will click here and then click on download template. Here is our migration template. And as usual, the first sheet explains how to use this template. 
And then we have the field list that explains all the different fields in the master data and for the transaction data of the of fixed assets. So of course you should check this sheet to find the fields that you would like to fill. And then we have here all the different sheets. So any sheet that's in orange is mandatory, any sheet that's in blue is optional, but based on your business scenarios, some of the blue sheets are mandatory for you also. So you need to be careful where you are going to fill the different details. So first I will start with the master data. And if we go here, I already filled this template. So I'm going to create two assets today. I'm going to create one building and one machine. So here I have the company code AG00, and then we have here the external legacy as number 10101. This is the same concept as what we had before in the business partner. So here we can insert a value that SAP will use to map the different sheets to, to map the different sheets to the same assets. So to map the different values in the different sheets to the same asset record. So now here I'm using 100 and all the other sheets I'm going to use 100 also. So SAP will be able to link the different details to the same asset. So here I have 100 and 101. And also we can choose that we want SAP to create the asset on the system using this number. If we are using external number range for the asset master data, but if we are using internal asset number ranges, then in this case, this value is only used for the mapping in our template. Same concept as the business partner. If you are following the playlist, you should already understand how this works. And then we have the asset sub number. We can create different sub numbers under the same asset if we want. And then we have the asset class 1100 and 2000. These are standard asset classes for building and machinery. I'm using the standard configuration. But in order to be able to create the master data for fixed assets and to also upload the transaction data, I had to do a lot of configuration steps in my company code. And again, the company code that I'm using in this playlist, I am building from, my, from scratch in my demo system. So all the configuration steps that I had to do in detail are mentioned in the configuration manual that I share with the elite members. Here is the configuration manual. And in order to be able to run the demo today, I added some steps under the chart of account configuration and also under the controlling area configuration. And at the end here, you can find all the steps I did for fixed assets to be able to create the fixed asset master data and the post financial transactions, because this is the first time that we post transaction values to this company code. So I maintained all the configuration steps in detail that I had to do. So you should check this document if you are an elite member. If you are not an elite member and you would like to get access to this document, then you can check the channel membership program. I will leave you another link here. So this is the configuration manual. Now let's get back to our template. So here I am using the asset classes 1100 and 2000. This is the description of the asset after. So we have building two and machine two. And then if we go to the right, we have a lot of other details that I have chosen not to insert. If you would like to insert these details, then go ahead. So this is it for the master details. These are the mandatory fields. Then I am going to switch to the posting information. In the inventory sheet, we also have other values, but I'm not going to maintain any of them. So I'm keeping this sheet completely empty. So here we can have the external legacy as number, the as sub number again to map the values. Then we can insert the last inventory date, supplementary inventory and inventory indicator. I'm not going to fill these. I don't want to fill these details. So I'm keeping this sheet completely empty. I'm not going to insert any values here. Then in the posting information, this is a mandatory sheet. So first we have the company code, the asset external legacy number again as a sub number. So these are three mandatory fields. So SAP can map the different fields to the same asset record. And then here we have the asset capitalization date. So now I'm maintaining two assets. For the first asset, I have a capitalization date of 2013. So first September 2013. And for the second asset, the capitalization date was in first of September 2021. So this is the example I'm using in the demo today. Here you insert the actual capitalization date for your assets that you are going to transfer to SAP s hana And SAP will calculate the depreciation based on these values. So now let's go to the right here and I'm not going to fill any other details. Now let's switch to time dependent data. This is where we maintain our cost center. So here again, we have the same three mandatory fields, the company code, asset number and asset sub number. And then we have business area. I'm not going to fill. We have the cost center. So for the first asset, I have 1000 for the second 2000. This is the cost center that will be used for the depreciation expense. All of this has already been explained in the fixed asset playlist. Now let's go to the right. I'm not going to insert anything else in these deed in these fields. So I'm keeping all of them empty. So only the cost center is important for me. 
now we have many other sheets here that I have chosen not to, to not to fill so you can go ahead and fill any sheets you find mandatory for your business scenarios there are some other values that I filled so let me check the list of the sheets here so allocations I didn't use origin I'm not filling anything account determination I'm not filling net worth real estate leasing the same then we have depreciation areas so these are the values for our depreciation areas that you can find in the last screen in the master data when we are maintaining the asset in SAP GOI. There are default values maintained in the configuration of the system for the asset classes. So if I don't fill any values here, SAP will take the default values from the configuration. And this is what I want. This is why I'm not filling any details at all here. But if you would like to override the defaults, then you can insert the values. So here you can insert the depreciation area. Then you can say, for example, if you open here, is the depreciation area deactivated? Which depreciation key you would like to use? So would you like to use a straight line depreciation or double declining method? And then we have the useful life in years and in periods and many other fields. If you leave these fields empty, so if you leave this sheet empty, SAP will use the default values that we have in the configuration. If you would like to override the default values, then, then you can assert values here. I'm leaving this sheet empty, so this way we can see how SAP will use the default values. Now let's check the rest of the sheets. So after depreciation area, I have investment support I'm not using. Then we have cumulative values and posted values. Very important. This is where we start maintaining the transaction data for fixed assets. So now I will go to cumulative values. Here I have my two assets, 100, 101. So again, the three main fields. And then for the depreciation area, I can insert what is the current fiscal year, what is the accumulated acquisition value? So the accumulated acquisition value for the first asset is 400,000 and for the second is 10,000. So this is a building and a machinery. And then we, he we here we have if there is any cumulative revaluation, cumulative investment grants, and we have the accumulated ordinary depreciation. So this is the accumulated depreciation. So now if you check here, this is very easy to understand. So here I have the accumulated depreciation value and I have the acquisition and production value. So this, this asset has a total value of 400,000 and then accumulated depreciation of 100,000. So the net book value should be 300,000. So now if we go to the right, we also have cumulative special depreciation and many other fields related to the different values we have in our transactions for fixed assets. I'm not maintaining any of them. I'm keeping this example today as simple as I can. So we only have the basic fields. We have the acquisition production cost, so the total acquisition value, and we have the accumulated depreciation. In the following sheet, we have posted values. In posted values, we maintain any value that we want to post in the year of the migration. So for example, if I'm doing the data migration within the fiscal year, so for example, I'm doing it here in September 2023, and my fiscal year starts from January 2023, then the cumulative values, I'm going to insert the values until 31st December 2022. So until the last closed fiscal year. And then any other values I would like to migrate, I will insert in posted values. So for example, now we have nine months of depreciation from January until September that I did not post in the cumulative values because they are related to the current fiscal year. I can either insert this depreciation value here manually and then SAP will post it when I do the migration or I can choose that I'm not going to migrate these values. I'm only going to migrate the values until the last closed fiscal year, which is 2022. And then in SCEP, I'm going to post these transactions in the current year manually. For the depreciation, we can leave it empty here. And then after we do the migration of the fixed asset master data, the acquisition value and accumulated depreciation, we can run a depreciation run in SAP s hana and the SAP is going to calculate all the depreciation that's related to the current fiscal year. And this is what I'm going to do. So here I'm not going to insert any ordinary depreciation value. I'm going to leave this empty. I will do the migration of my master data and of the, accumulate, the acquisition value and accumulated depreciation. And then after this, I will run a depreciation run in SAP s hana so SAP can post the late depreciation for the current fiscal year. The same concept applies to the different fields in this screen, in the sheet posted values. So these are the transactions related to the current fiscal year if we are doing the migration within the fiscal year. So here we have posted revaluation, posted ordinary depreciation, posted special depreciation for the year, posted unplanned depreciation, and so on. 
So if you'd like to migrate any values related to the current fiscal year, you can insert here. Otherwise, you can run the transactions after you end the data migration. Now let's switch to the next sheet. We have transactions transfer during fiscal year. So if we check this sheet, here we can maintain the different transactions that happened during the current fiscal year. So for example, if we have retirement or acquisition that happened after the last close fiscal year, then we can maintain it here. Our fixed asset has a value of 400,000, an acquisition value of 400,000 until end of 2022, the last closed fiscal year. Then if within 2023, before the transfer date, so from January until September, we posted any additional acquisition transactions to the asset or any retirements, then we can insert the details here. And this way we migrate these details to SAPS for HANA, or we can leave this empty and we can perform these transactions manually after we do the data migration. The choice is up to you. So here I'm leaving all of this empty also, but if we would like to have uh, an extra acquisition transaction or a retirement transaction that's posted to the asset within the year, then here we insert the asset transaction type. So first we of course fill the main fields. So the asset uh, number, the asset sub number company code, then we insert the, the position area. Then here we insert the transaction type. So this can be a retirement and acquisition, I explained what's a transaction type in the fixed asset playlist and how this is used. So I'm not going to explain this again here, but here you insert the transaction type, the current fiscal year. So SAP knows that this transaction happened within the current fiscal year of the migration. And then we can insert the reference date and the amount posted and the other details. So if you'd like to insert any transaction for acquisition or retirement that happened within the year, you can fill these details. This is it for the template. Now we have inserted all the details we want. So I'm going to save and switch to SAP Fury. Here we have our migration project and for the migration object for fixed assets, we have downloaded the template and we have filled the different details. Now the next step is to upload the template to the staging tables. So I will click on upload file. Then here click on upload, choose the file. And now we wait until the upload is done. So we can go back to the monitoring screen. So go back to the project go to monitoring and wait until the validation is done. Now the validation is complete. We have validate file completed, import file completed, and we don't have any issues. So we get back to the migration object and we proceed to the following step, which is prepare. So click on prepare and then prepare staging tables, go back to monitoring and wait for the preparation to be done. Now the preparation is complete and we don't have any errors. Let's get back and move to the following step, which is mapping tasks. So here we can check the different values and how they are mapped. One of the most important ones is the one related to internal or external numbering because this what tells SCAP whether the number that we inserted for the asset in the upload template is going to be used as the asset number in SCAP or not. So here I am using internal fixed asset number assignment. So when I create an asset in SCAP, I want SCAP to pick the number of the asset from the number range maintained in the system. I don't want to insert it externally. So I will tell SAP that whatever I inserted in the template is only for template mapping. It's not going to be used in the system. So click here. And here we have two options, either internal numbering or external numbering. So I'll click here on the options. So I will tell SAP that I am using internal numbering for my fixed assets. So now SAP knows that the numbers I used in the template are only for mapping and are not going to be used as the asset number in the system. Then click on confirm. If you use external numbering for your fixed assets, so when you create an asset, you insert the asset number, and then you insert these numbers in your upload template so SAP can use them as your asset numbers, then in this case, you will choose external numbering, of course. Then we can move to the other values and confirm all of them. There is nothing important here that I need to mention. So this is for the asset classes, confirm. Then we have mapping of the position areas. So zero one is zero one, yes, confirm. And we don't have anything else. So now I can go back to the migration object and we can move to the following step, which is simulate. So now I'm going to simulate the migration. So click on start simulation, then go to monitoring and we will have to wait until the simulation is done to see if we have any errors. Now the data simulation is completed. We don't have any errors. So I will go back to the migration object and we move to the last step, which is migrate. Start migration. Okay. And now we have to wait until the migration is done. 
The reason I did not face any errors in the data migration this time is because I did another run for the fixed est migration before recording this demo to avoid having a very long video because recently the videos in this playlist have been too long. So if I go back here and let me show you the other project. So here I have an, a project that's called Other AG, another migration project. And if I go here, here I have already done the migration of fixed assets. And if we check the monitoring, I have actually faced a lot of errors while doing the data migration for fixed assets in this project. So I'm, going, I'm not going to show you these errors in this video, otherwise the video will be too long, but I'm going to create another video where I will explain all of these errors and how I solved all of them. And I will release the video in the same day as the other video for the data migration of fixed assets. So if you are watching this video now, if you go to the end of the video, in the end of screens, you will find a link to the video that where I am showing the errors and how to solve them. Now let's get back to our project and see if the migration is done. So go back, again go to our project migration demo for AG00, go to monitoring, and now the migration is complete without any errors. We can check the messages to see the asset numbers that were created and also the accounting document numbers for the transaction data that has been posted because now we have accounting entries this time that have been posted and we can check the accounting entry. So first let's go here to success and if you go all the way to the, to the end of the screen, here we have the asset numbers. So asset number two zeros one and the other one is asset number one zeros one have been created and also we have asset transaction was posted with document number. Here is the document number. So we have two documents. We have one for the first asset and one for the second asset. Now let's switch to SAP GUI to see the asset master data and the transaction that was posted. Here is SAP GUI and the transaction to display the fixed asset master data is AS03. We have our company code here and the asset number that was created is this one. Enter. So this is the asset that we just created. The description is building two. We have here the account determination. The capitalization date is 1 September 2013. This is the date that we maintained in the template. Then in time dependent, we have our cost center and we have the profit center and segment which were driven automatically from the cost center. So I did not insert these values in the template. SAP found them automatically from the cost center. And then here in assignment, we don't have anything. Origin is the same because we did not maintain any values. If I go to depreciation areas, you can see that we have the depreciation areas automatically maintained, the useful life and the ordinary depreciation start date. So these details were filled based on the defaults configured on the system. Because if you remember in the template, I did not insert anything in the depreciation areas sheet. So here we have for this asset, this is the building, the useful life is 40. This is the default value maintained for this asset class. And then the ordinary depreciation start date is 0109-2013, which is aligned with the capitalization date that we maintained. So the expired useful, useful life is nine years and four months, and this is all correct. So this is the asset. Now, if we switch to asset values, here we can see the acquisition cost is 400,000 and we, see, we can see the ordinary depreciation. So the accumulated depreciation is 100,000. So the netbook value is 300,000, which is correct. And if you check here in transactions, we have asset value date 0101-2023. We have an amount of 400,000 transaction type 970 asset data transfer. So this is the initial asset master data transfer. And then if we go here to posted values, we can see the planned depreciation for the year 2023. And as you see, we have all the depreciation planned. So now we are in September, but as you see here, nothing is posted from January. And this is what I told you about. So because in our template, I did not maintain any depreciation values for this year, SAP is showing that all of them are planned and nothing has been posted. Once we do a depreciation run, SAP is going to post all, the, all these values until September or until August when we do the run. So if you do the run today and you run it for period eight, SAP is going to post everything in period eight. I'm not going to show you the depreciation run because I already showed this in detail in the fixed asset playlist. So you can check it if you want. But now you see the migration is successful. We have our fixed asset master data. We have our transactions. The last thing is to check the accounting entry, which is very interesting. So in here, if we double click here, we can see the accounting entry that was posted automatically with the data migration. So we have a debit to the buildings for 400,000. So this is the acquisition account. We have a credit to accumulated depreciation for 100,000. 
and we have fixed asset legacy data transfer initial account this is the account number for 300,000 all of these three accounts are defined in the configuration for my company code you can find all the details in the configuration manual that is shared with the elite members so these two accounts the building and the community depreciation these are the accounts that will be used always for this asset class so it, they are not related to the migration only these are the normal accounts for this asset and then the one that's related to the migration is this one the legacy data transfer account and this one we maintain in the configuration so SAP will use it when we do the data migration and this one is included in the rule that I explained in the last video that all the migration accounts must have a zero balance so this account now has a balance of 300,000 for this asset but then we will migrate the materials we will migrate the customers the vendors and when we are done with all the migration for all the GL accounts the, the balance of all our initial data transfer accounts must be zero this is it for the data migration of fixed asset for the master data and the transaction data i hope it was easy to understand and to follow let me know if you have any questions in the comments and now that you have reached this far in the video i'm going to leave you a link around me here somewhere to the other video where i show all the errors i faced while doing the data migration and how i solved all of them so go ahead and check it don't forget to check the other videos in this playlist and the other playlists available on the channel also share the videos with your connections and subscribe to the channel if you would like to support the channel and get access to the configuration documents and the member exclusive videos then you can check the channel membership program i'm going to leave you a link somewhere here thank you for watching and i'll see you again soon